going to try and answer a few questions that people had. Uh, so what I'm going to go over uh, briefly in this little video is basically kind of common problem, problems and questions people have about Blender and Unity and maybe using the two of them together. Okay, so the first question basically is, let's see here. Okay, I did everything like you said, but when I import into Unity, uh, I made a building, it only shows like half, like it's cut away. Okay, I think I know what the problem is here. And this is a common problem, so I'm going to go over it uh, for everybody. So here's a box in Blender that I made, just a box. And if you see if I tab into it, you can see it has many, many different faces. Uh, and let's say that was kind of be a, be a building that you made. And I exported that as an FBX file, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring that uh, file into um, into Unity. You could see the box before it looked normal. So let's just drag that into Unity, and as you can see here, uh, there's a lot of problems with this model. There's chunks of this model that are kind of cut out. All right, so if we spin it around, you can see uh, that there's kind of some strangeness going on. And then there's also kind of like these weird shadows going on. Okay, so um, the most common reason for this to happen is, let's go back to Blender here. Okay, and I'll tab into edit mode. You'll see I have some faces selected here. And uh, if we go ahead and bring up our um, view menu here, which is N on the keyboard. And when we tab into edit mode, if we select under normals, if we select, for example, face, Okay, then you'll see these little blue uh, lines pop out here. And normally, um, these little blue lines that uh, show you the normal, they should always be pointing outwards. So you can see the little blue lines here pointing outwards. If you can't see them very well, you can increase the size of the blue lines by just dragging this thing here, the normal size. So now you can very, see very well that some of these things are pointing the wrong way. So you can see here how, how this happens, or there's many different ways that, that normals can be flipped around. Sometimes when you copy and flip things over, uh, when you transform things back and forth, the normals can become flipped, all right? So uh, the best way, um, the easiest way to get rid of these is if you just select everything, then here under your mesh tools, let's go ahead, and under normals, there's a recalculate button, okay? And when you recalculate, you can see here that the normals are all now flipped around. Uh, let's say the recalculation didn't work. You can manually just select some stuff and then say flip direction. You'll see that the normals flip and we'll flip direction again, all right? Okay, we'll tab. Now let's go ahead and export this again over top of the old one. Autodesk FBX. I'm gonna give it a scale of 100, which tends to show up uh, at the right size in Unity. And I'll just overwrite that program or that, um, oops. I'll overwrite the one that I showed you before. It's called Normals Box. Okay, it should export it. Now when we go into Unity, you can see here that it has uh, changed. And you can also see that not only is that correct, but those weird black smudges are gone as well because not only does the uh, normal flip the uh, face so that the face is showing the wrong way, sometimes the faces around it uh, will be screwed up. So um, it's very easy to not realize that you have flipped over normals. So uh, one good way, let me flip some normals back here on purpose. Flip the direction. Have a couple of these normals, we'll just select them and flip them. Okay, and one easy way to do this is maybe before you go ahead and start to export your uh, model, go under your view mode to textured mode. And then usually you can see, here it's very obvious, sometimes it won't be quite so obvious, but here you can see, you're seeing right through parts of the model that you're not supposed to see through. And so that's a pretty obvious thing. Sometimes you'll see this little weird black um, kind of uh, spiky look to the the edges of, of the, uh, you know, texture where the, where the light is hitting it. So, you know, that is one good way to check it and stuff, all right? Okay, so that's the basics of that. And um, let's tab into that again. And let's uh, recalculate everything. Oops. There you go. Now, okay. I'm going to go back to my solid mode. And then let's go ahead and put an armature into this thing 
so that we can go to answer some people's other questions. This is more of a, just a standard blender question. And uh, let's go ahead and add an armature to this object here. So let's go ahead and add an armature. I'll say single bone. Let's move it into place. Make sure that it's kind of in the middle there. And so that I can see it correctly, let's move this over. Click on our armature button here and turn on x-ray so that I can see it well. Kind of move it right in the center. Okay, and I'll hit tab to go into edit mode. And then I'll move this up. And I'll hit E to extrude another bone. Okay. Okay, now the armature is set. Okay, I'll select the object. You know what, hold on a second. Let me turn on. Sorry about that, I forgot to turn on my screencast keys. If you're doing tutorials of your own, don't forget that under your, when you hit the N key in the 3D view, uh, there's a screencast keys here. If you have that, in fact, uh, enabled that add-on. Okay, um, I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna right click on the uh, armature and I'm gonna hit Control P to parent the object to the armature. I'm gonna say uh, parent it with armature to form set to automatic weights, all right? Okay, I'm going to right-click on the uh, armature, and then I'll go to pose mode. Let's start posing this. Okay. So you should see that uh, it's, in fact, posing the object. And what happens, uh, a lot of people are saying that um, sometimes they'll say, well, I did what you said, but I can't pose the object. So after they parent the object, uh, object to the armature and select the automatic weights, um, what they don't realize is that, is that they're still in object mode. And so they're trying to select this and they're saying, what is going on? I, I can't pose this thing. Or they're going like this and they don't realize that they're in edit mode and they're saying, the other thing that they'll tell me is, when I rotate the bone, the, the object doesn't move with it and the bone gets all stretchy. Well, that's because you're not... Um, posing the bone, you're actually editing the bones in the edit mode, okay? So, again, there's three modes. Object mode, again, it's just for moving objects around scenes. Uh, edit mode is for editing the actual, you know, inner parts of the object. And finally, pose mode, which is only available for bones, is just for, you know, posing, just rotating and scaling and, and moving the bones, all right? So, as long as you've got the... Um, now, if you move this and parts of the uh, model stay behind, it's because you haven't done enough, you know, the weight painting is not complete. So, for example, here, if you look at this, you can see when you create, uh, when you parent the bone to uh, the object of the armature, uh, it should automatically create uh, these vertex groups for each bone. And, of course, another way you can check this, if you select the object and then you go, let's hold, uh, bring up T for our toolbar. And then we go to, when you select an, a physical object, like a mesh object, different options come up. You can see the, the, the object mode drop-down box is context sensitive. If we select a light, all we have is object mode because you can't edit the appearance of a light. If you select an armature, you have three options. You have pose, edit, and object. And if you select a mesh, you know, a polygonal object, you have many, many more options. And one of those is weight paint. And so if you select that, you go into weight paint mode. And if you have your um, toolbar up, then you know you're, you, you will automatically be in, in weight paint mode. And whatever uh, bone that you had selected while you were in pose mode, that is what will show up. All right. So let me go ahead and go and turn the tool from mix to subtract. All right. Turn the strength up to one. Okay. And then I will subtract, subtract a, a few of these guys here. And so you can see some of the vertexes, we've subtracted from this bone on purpose. And so now you can see they kind of spike away from this. All right, so we'll go into back to object mode. Again, we're back to object mode for this object. Now when we select the bones, we're back to pose mode because that was the last mode we were in when we left. Now when we go ahead and move this, you'll see that part of the object stayed behind because we we kind of poorly edited the uh, weight painting. 
So again, to get back into the weight painting, we select the actual object, we go to weight paint mode. All right, now this time, instead of subtract for the tool, I'm gonna to say add. We keep the strength as one. And we're gonna paint over top of this. And you can see the red means that it's completely attached to this bone. Green means it's kind of, sort of, a little bit attached. So we're just going to paint over top of that completely. Go back to object mode. Select the bone. And start moving around. And now everything is hunky-dory. All right. So that's some of the common problems and some of the common, uh, I don't know, complaints or questions that people have. Uh, and I hope that, you know, they're kind of so common that I figured I would go ahead and just kind of list them here. So, uh, I hope that these little um, gotchas uh, don't get you anymore. I'll talk to you later. Bye.